Hello everyone. Welcome to OET All Stars. Um, so if you're able to log in and watch the stream, let me know. I look forward to your comments as we start. And uh, we have a very informative session lined up on uh, providing structure in uh, a clinical uh, interview, a consultation or the OET's role play. So um, my name is Milan Jacob and uh, I'm an expert OET trainer from IRS Group. We are based in India, but we offer courses online to candidates from across the globe. And I'd be happy to see where you're logging in from. I, I know that many of you are preparing for the OET test. Good evening, Anthony. Yes, so it's a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're logging in from. Uh, hey, hello, everyone. Hello, Ruth. New man. Hello, Devin. Good to see you back. Hello, Gino. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure to see familiar faces um, come back. Hi, Ad Adela. Diesel, hello. Ruth is from Zimbabwe, good to know that. Janel, good, good, good evening, Janel. Good to see all of you and um, Mamta from Nepal. Hello, Monish. You have been consistent throughout a lot of sessions. Good to have you back. Uh, yes. Um, one guy also from Zimbabwe. Um, many from Philippines. Kanu from Nigeria. Hello, Danya. Hello, uh, Mbanga. Raquel from the UK. Hello, Rani, good to see you back. Hello, Martin. Hello, everyone. Good to, good to see how keen you are to um, continue with your OET preparation and also to um, improve your clinical skills. Hello, everyone. Dade, Noor. Dade from Saudi Arabia. To, the great kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Um, right, so to, to begin with, um, I want to introduce two patients to you before we go into certain specific uh, techniques. Hello, Tarindu from Sri Lanka. Hey, Jinu. Susmi, hello. Sipun, yeah, a lot of you are from India, just like we are from India. And Mozamel from Sudan, hello from the UK. Um, Amadar Awis from Zambia. Um, Rajin, it's your last week of preparation. So I hope what we discussed today will help you in your test, which is coming up very soon. Hello, Ashika from Nepal, the, the beautiful Himalayan country. So, so today we are looking at how you can um, incorporate certain techniques um, to uh, improve your organization. So good to see all of you from Philippines. So, so we have Ryan and the doctor or the nurse, so any health professional, it could be anyone has asked um, Ryan to do moderate exercises. Now he doesn't understand. Do you think that's a problem? Do you think that Ryan not understanding is a problem? So can you tell me how the doctor or the nurse can 
Make sure that he understands. In your chat box, can you type in what could have been done to make sure that Ryan understands? Hello, everyone. I see um, you uh, commenting. Unfortunately, um, I can't read all your names right now, but I'll try to as uh, we progress. But welcome, everyone, and good to have all of you. Um, so Amda says, let the patient per perform, perhaps. Um, I don't really get what you're saying, but uh, could you explain that a little bit to me, please? Um, yeah. OK. Um, so I've got another patient as well who also has some similar problem. Her name is Sophie. You would have seen Sophie a while ago. So, um, so she had a consultation with a dietitian, and she remembers most things that the dietitian told her. But she forgot the advice to reduce salt intake. Don't you think that is a problem? Um, she remembers almost everything except a minor thing. So is that a problem? And if so, what could have been done better to improve patient recall? Patient recall is um, the, um, the skill of the patient to retrieve information which has been given or remember it. Uh, you should let them verbalize what you say or uh, instructed. So Abigail says that, right? Uh, Avi says demonstrating what the patient should do. Good. I get it. Yes. So there are a lot of things that can be done. Excellent. Uh, Mubanga says explain in simple terms what you intend to do. Very good. Certainly it would help. Um, yes. Uh, I, I see your point. But today we are going to look at... Um, a few techniques in which um, what we say, yeah, or what we demonstrate, what we explain, can be um, can be organized better. So Abigail again says, reiterate the teaching of reducing salt intake. Brilliant. Ruhi says, repeat the information. Exactly, exactly. So that's where we are headed to, and good to see that um, we are on the same page. And uh, some of you already know a little bit of it. Jana says, practice in her daily basis. All right. Um, so is that a, a reinforcement or something like that? Regine says, give a few samples of food with lost salt. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. summarize the information at the end. So that is from Marjana. And very good, Marjana. That's a very good point. So we'll be looking at how to summarize. Uh, that's one of the items, uh, one of the techniques which we will be discussing today. So very good to see uh, that. Right. So, so this is what we are going to do. How can you improve patient understanding and recall? So these two are very important, whether the patient understands what you say and whether there is a proper recall, whether there is a proper retrieval and, um, you know, if you ask at a later point, do they remember it? Are they able to produce it? That's very important. And um, given the situation a while ago about how can a nurse make sure the patient understands the exercises, perhaps uh, we can let them demonstrate the exercise or we can let patients state the procedures. Yes, they can state it. Very good. Uh, Cyril says, provide them pamphlets which explain about what the patient should follow. Yes, providing uh, literature is very good, but that is um, beyond the scope of our discussion because we are trying to improve uh, how to communicate or better improve the communication skills in the context of OET and beyond. Right, so uh, um, there have been a lot of studies and um, one study says patients 
do remember up to 85% of what has been told and they may forget something like 15%. But imagine if the salt intake reduction falls in the 15% as what happened to Sophie, don't you think even that 15% could hold a lot of very, very important information which the patient shouldn't forget at all? So, so total recall or the ability to remember everything is very important in the OETS context. So we're going to, to drill a little bit, go down a little bit deep into this part of um, providing structure in uh, the OET's context. Um, yeah. Uh, Cheryl says, write important information and give it to the patient. Yes. In a clinical setting, yes, of course. Um, but in our context, we can't uh, write it down. Um, I'm talking about the OET's speaking subtest, where you can't do that, but uh, you'll have to learn to you know, do it in, in other ways by explicitly communicating. Uh, Biji Chako says, repeat what you have discussed in another simple way. Excellent. Um, Amanda says, emphasize the important points. Brilliant. Anthony says, ask the patient to reiterate for you. Brilliant. Very good. Very good. I like the comments and they are to the mark. So, so it's a good sign that Everyone's learning and you have learned a lot. Hey, guy three, good to see you. Hello. Um, yeah, so we are going to look at a few specific organizing techniques, organization techniques, which will improve, which will help to improve our patient understanding and recall. Um, yeah, so these are the four specific techniques which we'll cover today. Um, provide effective feedback regarding low salt diet. We, excellent, yes. So, so that's uh, something which we are going to look at now. Ronnie says, get the confirmation from the patient by asking them uh, the same. Yes, yes, uh, perfect. So um, remember that um, Although we are looking at uh, certain specific as aspects of clinical communication, this has an overall bearing on how you perform. So when you, when you improve in these minor areas, you will actually improve in your overall speaking. So um, when you are able to speak better, applying uh, these specific techniques, you, you become more confident and relaxed in the OET's uh, test. So that's very, very important. So don't forget to, to like and share this lesson so that your friends as well are able to watch it uh, with us. Um, so if you, are, uh, if you have friends preparing for OET, or if you have uh, colleagues at work who you know, like to apply these skills, you may, you may be uh, able to share it right now so that they will get the access as well. So let's go into these techniques. First one is categorization. Can you tell me what you mean by categorization? What do you think uh, this technique is? How uh, would you explain categorization? Sally asks where I am based. Uh, Sally, I'm based in Kerala in India. Hi, Bino, Joe Moore, Sally. Good to see all of you uh, joining. Excellent. So what, what comes to your mind when you hear categorization? It's a, a common word. We hear it uh, in different context. Hello, Yusuf. So, in the clinical context, what it means is that patients are informed about the category of information to be provided. So, um, and you can apply that in, in all contexts, like, you know, when you're gathering information, it can be in a category, when you're providing information, 
Again, you can apply categories. Um, Devin says, ask them to be which will comfortably. So are you talking about a specific topic, you know, before you introduce that, ask them whether you're comfortable? Yeah, certainly. But categorization is, you know, uh, Rennie says prioritizing. Um, we can prioritize the categories, yes, exactly. Uh, putting, Banga says putting things in the order of importance. A type of information, Ruhi, yes. Hello, Deepika. So, so can you think of some categories um, in which uh, information is uh, given or gathered in the context of OET speaking? Think of a, a few categories. Just type in, in the chat box the categories you think. Uh, so Rani says, yeah, dividing the information. So give me some examples, Rani. Um, Jasmine says, stress the main point. You're coming to that. Um, so think of some categories. I've got a few for you. Jana says, systematic information. Excellent. I've got a few on the screen for you, just random categories. It's not a comprehensive one. Did you say it's described from simple to complicated? Sally says introduction, body, conclusion. Yeah, kind of. Lissy says age of the patient. Yep, yeah, personal details. Diet, Anthony, very good. Uh, Rajkumar says introduction category, are you in, where you introduce like uh, the introduction part, sorting the information. Uh, Janelle says medication, lifestyle, social, excellent. I think I've put some of those for you as well on the screen. So good to see that we are on the same page. Yep. So so we have, uh, yes, yes. I see all the categories coming and that's very good. So exactly, Ruhi, and that is uh, signposting. Um, yep. So, 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 so to practice these skills and techniques, I have something for you. And so here is a, a role play card from an upcoming OET book, which we will use today. So if you're able to read um, the task, Think of the various categories um, which are part of the task items. Can you can you identify some categories from from these bullet points? Excellent, Johnny. Yes. Yes, Marjana. That's right. So based on this role play card, can you identify certain categories which we can discuss later? Yeah. So as your categories come in, um, I would, I'd mark a few for you. Yes, Jeff. So now this is again not a complete list, but a, a few categories from this um, role play card. So you have the findings, um, diet, Medication, excellent Sally, yes, diet and medication. Um, compliance, exercise, yes, Marjana, that's right. That's right. So all these are different categories. Okay, so um, when you speak, you could uh, actually 
introduce the topic or the category that is going to be uh, spoken about. So this is one technique which will help you to improve your, your speaking. So by categorizing what you're helping uh, your patient is to, to be aware of what is being discussed and they'll focus on that aspect and they will not deviate because um, you know they know like this aspect is being covered now so i should pay attention to this aspect i should not ask other questions right now let me listen to this and let me um, give any information uh, about this particular aspect so this helps in uh, grouping again uh, which we are going to look at now we'll be we'll be doing uh, yes reggie com complaints okay diet medication and exercise yes so we'll we'll come back to this because we are going to practice some of it uh, in another um, after we we cover a very brief description of all the uh, techniques so let's now uh one guy says you find it difficult to read it can you read it now this is a, a bigger picture but uh, perhaps i'll post the session i'll post it um as a comment right so let's now move on to the next technique, which is something called labeling. You see a role of labels. So when do you label in the context of uh, clinical communication or OET speaking? What do you mean by labeling? Can you, can you share your thoughts in the chat box? What idea do you get from the technique of labeling? Have you ever labeled within um, the speaking. Hello, Josephine. Joining from Pakistan. Very good. So please type, type in your thoughts about labeling in speaking in a clinical communication context and have you ever labeled? If so, uh, how and when? Jana says no allergies, yes. So basically it's a category, but we, we're going to label it as something like important so hello sanrakshi from sri lanka so labeling is we have now discussed the categories but labeling is branding something as let's say important or something of that sort so we can use um, emphatic statements or uh, and verb intensifiers to, to do that. So it's like, this is very, very important. I am labeling what I'm telling. Labeling is important and that's a labeling in itself. Um, yeah. So, uh, yes, yes, Martin, when giving important advice, yes, you can label. Claire, I'm afraid it's not about relationship building. Uh, Highlighting, yes, Sally, highlights. Uh, urgent, non-urgent, we, yeah. So here, here are a few examples of uh, labeling done before you, you start something or in the... Uh, this is asking, is it the same as signposting? No. Um, now, these are very closely linked. You signpost, signposting um, may not be labeling, but before you label, you can signpost. Signposting is indicating that you're going to this category and then you label this category. Um, 
Yannick, I'm sorry to hear that, but I would suggest you, you make sure you prepare thoroughly and then sit the test. Um, Rainy, yes. I'll, I'll give you an example of when we are going to do it in speaking. So as soon as I finish all the techniques, I'm going into a few examples so that you understand how to apply. Sure. Please, please wait on Rainy for a few minutes. Yes, Ali, emphasizing. Yes. So when you say, like, I strongly suggest that you follow this diet, it's vital that um, we bring down the blood sugar levels. Um, I really understand that um, you're a bit stressed at work. All these are good ways of labeling. It's a kind of emphasizing, yes. Um, yeah. Highlighting, yeah, yes. So, um, right. So now let's move on to um, the next technique, which you must be aware of, and this is changing. Again, let me know if you know what changing is and if you um, have an idea what it is. What do you think changing is? Please type in. <coughs> Sorry. You must have heard of Changing uh, in different contexts as well. And even in uh, certain other parts of speaking, we apply Changing. Um, Yannick, yes, uh, our colleagues will be in touch with you. Um, Martin, no, it's not summarizing, I'm afraid. Um, no, it's not phrasing either. Um, it's not repeating either, Biju, I'm sorry. Um, no, 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 it's, it's slightly different. Um, can you think of other um, terms to describe? I think you... You understand what it is? But I'll show an example on the screen. So this is something like paragraphing in writing. If you're writing, you have paragraphing where information is grouped um, into cohesive units. Similarly in speaking, see if you look on the left side, it's a lot of information, loads of information, a huge block of text. Now that could be broken down into bite-sized chunks. So just for illustration, you have three um, assimilable chunks that's absorbable, edible, or, you know, something that can be handled yes now you get it dividing it into parts small amount of information rather than a long one very good vijay grouping summarizing of all the important information brilliant so look at chunking we discussed categorizing so categories can be chunks or in the role play card we have the bullet points they can be chunks of information so um, we're coming to that, Bianca. Um, yeah. So, chunking is grouping of information, and between chunks, there will be a slight pause, and in between, you can use other techniques as well. Very good. So, how do you chunk? How can you chunk? Think of how you can chunk. Um, this information. So, uh, greeting the patient can be a quick chunk, a, a small chunk, and then, you know, uh, right, being em empathetic with the patient. Uh, perhaps that could go together. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, Adela, breaking the importance. So, then you have uh, you know a discussion on the findings. Certainly, that should be another chunk. So um, now, a 
a lot of candidates uh, when you are under stress or um, concerned about the test um, about the timing or various factors you tend to speed up so um, Ruhi, that is signposting, uh, but signposting is done at the beginning of the chunks. Very good. So when you speak very fast, uh, one of the problems could be that you forget a chunk. When you forget a chunk, it's, it's almost like verbal diary, a lot of information just flowing and it, it becomes less and less intelligible. People may not really understand what you are trying to say. And that affects your overall performance as well. So this is very, very important. Now I'm labeling Changing. Excellent. Um, yes, yes, Alicat, yes. Very good. Group, group information into bite-sized pieces. Then check for understanding. Very good. We are coming to that point. So that is the last technique, repetition and summary or summarizing. Now, there are a few advantages. Firstly, it allows you to be sure you, know, you understand accurately what the patient has said. So when you summarize and when you repeat, you, know, you can be sure that you have understood what the patient was saying rather than being vague or unclear. That's a gray area sometimes because people may not really understand what um, the patient says and this could lead to misdiagnosis or uh, you know wrong prescriptions, a lot of clinical errors. So, so that's an area where you have to improve. Um, it also allows the patient to add new information that they may have forgotten earlier so when you when you summarize, when you repeat, when you ask them if 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 that's it or is there anything else, then they may they may remember something which they had not mentioned earlier, and they say, "No, doctor, I've got this problem as well," or "You know, nurse, this is also something I need." So this is something that leads to a completion of that. Um, yeah, and it also helps to identify any misunderstanding that may exist. So when there is a summarizing at the end, you can be sure that you as a health professional and your patient are on the same page. There is no confusion. There is no misunderstanding. There is no gray area. It's clear. So this is again very, very important. Um, yeah, so, so let's look at how you can repeat and summarize. Where do you repeat and summarize? Um, now, in an earlier session, uh, we had discussed this in a little bit of detail. So you can actually um, summarize at the end of a major chunk, yes. At the end of the entire conversation, yes, it depends. So it should blend in naturally because if you decide like at the end of every chunk, I'm going to repeat and summarize, and then it becomes monotonous and automatic, that's not ideal. So these techniques should be used as and when required. So it should become a, a part of your natural interaction with the patient rather than a, a, a skill which you just apply for the test. So you will you will learn um, from experience where to summarize, um, whether a repetition or summarizing would be helpful in that particular area, you would naturally do that. And that will make it really um, better you feel more confident and your speaking levels will definitely go up. Um, I'll take your question, Brayden, in a minute. Uh, so, so we're going to look at some examples. Now, for the example, 
um, I'm, I'm discussing um, the end of the second bullet, which says, um, be em em empathetic with the patient for having to go through difficulties put in place as part of uh, COVID-19 restrictions. So that discussion is over. And now we are starting with a summary. So that chunk of information has been covered and now it is a summarizing and repetition. So you could say something like, just to summarize, you've come in today because you've been experiencing fatigue, but couldn't get checks done due to the pandemic. So that's a summary of what was discussed earlier. We're not going into that, but we are just um, winding that task, with, sorry, with the summary. Now, how will you move on to the next bullet? How will you start the next bullet which says, discuss your findings, diabetes and hypertension uncontrolled, that may explain the physical fatigue. Think of the techniques we have just learned, discussed a while ago. Which of those techniques will you use? So can we use all of them? Type in quickly your responses. See, we have summarized um, the second task and now we are moving to using signpost, yes, coming to the Rani, yes, Sally, yes, very good, very good. Let the comments flow, let it be, let it be wrong, that's fine. Don't, don't be worried about typing in the wrong answers. That's how you learn and improve. So making mistakes is part of learning. Jeff says use labeling, of course we will label it. Yes, what else? Signposting and labeling, brilliant running. Okay, so let's see what else can be done. So what do you see in the second bubble which has just come up on the screen? Um, let me now discuss my findings based on the test results. So, so what 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 all techniques do you see in that bubble? Okay. So Sally says, let's discuss about the diabetes and high blood pressure that may cause tiredness. Yes. A chair cat says signposting and labeling. Absolutely. Here we go. So the top line is a signpost. Let me now discuss. So you're signposting, you're moving on to something else, and that's what a signpost is. So someone was asking earlier. For an example of signposting and how you can apply, here is your answer. This is the signposting. This is how you can signpost. You can use other phrases as well. There's a lot of signposting language which you can use appropriately. That's fine. So, so you see signposting there. Is there something else? There is the category being specify signposting and then you specify the category now this is not a, a strict order this is just an example all right so don't get me wrong that every time you start a new chunk this is precisely you have to do no absolutely not um so so we see summarizing and repetition at the end of a bullet and then the next task begins with a signpost. Um, there is a category given. 
and what is that the third bubble can you tell me what the third bubble is of course it's easy we've been, we've been talking about it all along what do you think it is i think it is something which is really important so what would you call something which is really important absolutely jeff it is labeling excellent that's a label it's absolutely critical that we control your blood sugar levels right so so the patient will be alert and pay attention because you're labeling this category this label so it goes into their head and you know we are trying to improve the patient's understanding and improve their recall of the information which we have given so it's it's seamlessly happening it's naturally happening and if you're able to do it you know very naturally it just blends in and you'll be super confident on your test day now we did it after the second um task can you try your own summary for the end of this um bullet point the discussion uh, on the findings how do you summarize come up with your own uh, repetition or summarizing after that chunk is over um well rani is asking what is the difference between labeling and signposting signposting is um, using um discourse markers so signposting language to show that you're moving from one task to another let's move on to uh, let's discuss so that's signposting and categorizing is let's discuss lifestyle modification so lifestyle modification is the category right and um, labeling is emphasizing it giving it a label now this is paramount for your weight reduction so so that is labeling but don't worry too much about the the terminology focus on the skills this is not the scientific explanation of uh, these uh, techniques but rather a practical way of how you can apply it and um as long as you you are able to do it well and good uh, don't be too much concerned about the specific terminology or the the scientific aspects of it um just see how you can do it you're welcome right so i'm not getting summaries please summarize this how will you how will you summarize the end of this bullet and you can try the other skills as well signposting for the next bullet um categorizing if you want to try if you can categorize it labeling how do you label it this is the time for you to practice these skills and try if it works if you are acing it then i'm very confident that this is going to have a tremendous impact in how you speak mhm mm yes yes by repeating the information and ensuring that the patient has understood give me examples specific examples of how it will work for this specific bullet point um very good sally yes let me conclude what we just have discussed vijay said it's now evident that your blood pressure and blood sugar are the culprits for your fatigue excellent so it's reiterating you can invite the patient to summarize as well so 
both would work or uh, sometimes we do it as chunking and checking. Um, Tarundu says, according to your complaints regarding diabetes and hypertension, shows that they are not controlled as expected and fatigue you experience is a result of it, yes. Yep, yep, yep. Just to, yeah, to go uh, with what we have discussed is a good way of doing it. Anything else that you would like me to mention? Yes, yes, yes. Inviting them for further information. Um, yes, Marjana, you can label it as well. Very good. So, so to summarize um, what we have discussed and learned today, we were focusing on the techniques in which structure, you know, role play, a role play can be structured and that would you know, improve your clinical communication skills and that will lead to um, better OET scores and professional expertise as well. Um, so it's question time. Uh, Tarundu, yes, according to your complaints regarding diabetes and hypertension, it shows that they're not controlled as expected and fatigue. Yes, 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 very good. Um, we will say so far what we have discussed today. Yeah, yeah. So please type in uh, any of the questions you might have. Um, just uh, Bradlin was asking whether we need to introduce ourselves if, you, if we assess the patient before. Um, well, so what you're saying is that uh, yes, yeah, Shinsi, please ask. Um, yes, so you have it, you're talking about a, a familiar patient, I suppose. So you don't have to introduce, that's absolutely fine. So, um, you know, it is a little bit odd or weird to go and introduce to somebody whom you have just seen or, you know, is familiar to you. So you can start from there. That's perfectly fine. Um, Ruhi says, from the information you have provided, I came to know that this might be one of the causes of your problem. Yes. Um, Shinsi is asking, in one card, we just examined the patient. Okay. Um, so what you're saying is that you have examined the patient and um, can you explain that, Shinsi? Uh, Vivi is asking how you can improve your speaking um, ability. So um, I don't have a very simple answer for that. Um, you can improve using a number of techniques. Now you can improve uh, your general fluency by speaking a lot, um, attending lessons, um, listening to native speakers, um, and uh, a lot of things. But to improve specific OET skills, you'll have to get trained in those areas as well. Um, what about the name of the patient? You have a number of options you can do about the name of the patient, Zuba. Um, either you can ask the interlocutor what name uh, can be used for the patient, or you can use the interlocutor's own name which they would uh, tell you at the time of the introduction, or you can assume and give a name to the patient as well. It doesn't matter much. Um, yes, Abigail, yes, you can do that. Um, since your question was not complete, but um, I assume what you're asking is that whether you have to do um, 
a physical examination, like say that, let me examine the patient now, you don't have to. Um, I don't think role play should require a physical examination or telling of, about a physical examination. That part can be skipped. So it could be like either you have examined the patient and now you're discussing. So, um, Rani is asking about um, asking patients general questions, which is not in the task. As long as that question is connected with the task and does not contradict the task, it's fine. Uh, for instance, um, we have this patient who had, um, of who was advised, Sophie was advised on uh, reducing uh, salt intake. So, so you can ask questions about what sort of uh, diet she follows and um, does she um, consume a lot of snacks? That's fine. So it goes with it. But something that contradicts, no. I hope it's clear. Um, Anthony, I'm sorry to hear that you're stuck on a 340 in speaking. Uh, perhaps can you analyze what specific skills you could be lacking? Um, perhaps we, you could have an assessment from IRS group, we'd be happy to do that um, and see where you can improve. Um, yeah. Uh, Atek Kat is asking, if it is a known patient, do you have to ask the name? No, you don't have to. Um, you can ask uh, something like, uh, hello, Tom. Um, I've seen your reports and was wondering if we could discuss a little bit about the diagnosis, something like that. Um, yeah, so that, that's what exactly I was telling. Uh, there's nothing wrong in asking the name, especially if it is uh, a new patient. That's fine as well. Um, yeah, I wish that was something I was just explaining a while ago. You can ask your own questions um, as long as it is closely connected with the task and it does not contradict or oppose or deviate, uh, you know, no no major digressions allowed. Um, but yes, you can ask more questions which are connected to it, absolutely, because the, the bullet points are just a guide. Um, you'll have to expand on that. Um, yep. Right. So, so I hope I have um, addressed all your questions and if you have any, uh, more questions, uh, do let us know at IRS Group as a premium preparation provider and an All-Stars all provider. We are happy to give you uh, training if you require um, online training as well. Uh, so we are launching a foundation program in OET for those who are taking OET for the first time. So that includes some um, five days of free training so you can contact us on the, the numbers. They are based in India. Or you can drop us an email at info.irsgroup.in. We'd be happy to respond and um, we'll, we'll get you um, seats for the foundation program if you're interested. If you would like to take on any other uh, longer programs, feel free to contact us. Mm -hmm. Banga is asking, having heard the way to deal with the scenario, how the role play flow um, mean by the examiner and the candidate. So it should be a natural uh, dialogue between the uh, interlocutor and the uh, candidate. Uh, Shinsi is asking, in settings, uh, it's given. We just complete assessment that the patient has varicose veins, and the first task is to confirm the varicose vein again. We want to introduce. Um, OK, so I suppose what you are asking is that um, um, you, you, okay, the, you, you, are, you have the patient's information and whether you have to introduce. Um, so if it is a patient whom you have seen earlier, then perhaps you can take on from there. You don't have to give a long introduction. So um, like, hello, Shinsi, 
good to see you back today in the clinic. And um, I was just wondering if, uh, you know, uh, your condition has improved um, or you're still having the pain. So you can take on, and that's a more natural way, right? If you have seen a patient earlier and um, the next morning again, you go and introduce and say like, this is, you know, Milan and I'm a nurse here, I'm a doctor here. They will look at you like, all right, have you forgotten me? We, we just had a chat. So be natural in those contexts. OT prefers it when you do it more naturally rather than bringing in memorized patches. So try to avoid something which is memorized, be more natural, be more organic, be more uh, automatic in the sense like, you know, let it flow uh, as it would in a real clinical setting. Right, so thank you so much everyone for joining um, me and IR's group in this uh, masterclass on all stars. Uh, I hope you learned a lot in today's session and I look forward to seeing you in the upcoming sessions as well. So thank you very much and um, good luck with your studies and hats off to the fantastic work you do as health professionals. Thank you, everyone.